Welcome to PHT in the Morning with your host, Pastor David Miller from the Pentecostal Holiness Tabernacle in Cincinnati, Ohio. Good morning and welcome to another episode of PHT in the Morning with Pastor David Miller. And I want to start out this morning and uh, let you know why we haven't been on for two or three weeks on the podcast. I had gotten very sick and uh, was really kind of under the weather for about three weeks or so. And that's the reason I wasn't able to put one up. But I'm feeling a lot better and we'll be back with you regular here with you on PHT in the morning. So thank you for your understanding. And for those of you that knew, many of our followers already knew why. And thank you for your prayers. We, we have a scripture on our heart this morning that I think could be a help to you. And I'm going to talk to you from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse number 7. And I'm going to talk about uh, seven ways the devil will flee from us. Seven ways that Satan will have to flee. The Bible said there in Deuteronomy uh, 28, 7, the Lord shall cause thine enemies uh, that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. So I think this is a great and an interesting verse. I, I want you to notice the very first part, though, of this chapter, it talks about ways that God wants to bless us. And then he goes on, talks about ways God would curse us. So there's blessings for obedience and there's curses for disobedience. That's God's word. Now, if you notice verse number one, uh, the Bible said it'll come to pass that if you'll hearken unto the voice of the Lord, and observe to do all of his commandments. The Bible said, Then God will set thee on high, and God will do that. He wants to set you up on high. Verse 2, he said, And all the blessings will come upon thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Now, I think this is a very great and an interesting verse. But could you imagine that? He said he would cause the blessings of the Lord to overtake you. Now, to be blessed is a great thing. And I'm sure everyone listening today would like to have the blessings of the Lord upon their life in a rich way. But what a mighty thing to even think about the blessings of God coming so strong upon you that it would cause you to be overtaken with blessings. Yet that's what the Bible said. If you hearken to the voice of the Lord, then he said, you'll be blessed. He said, in the city and blessed in the field. Blessed by the fruit of your body and the fruit of the ground and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, flocks and sheep, and so on. He said, you'll be blessed. And all that's talking about, you know, was back then, their, their, most of their type of currency was in this type of thing and uh, those type of possessions. So uh, God was saying, I'm going to bless you. And then he said, and I love verse five. He said, bless shall thy basket and thy store. So God said, I want to fill your basket your baskets up, and I will fill up thy store. In other words, God, in other words, God's going to store up for you. He wants to store up blessings for you, that your basket is full, and that your blessings are stored up, that you can't even use them all because you've been overtaken by the blessings of the Lord. And he said, you'll be blessed when you come in, and you'll be blessed when you go out. Now, he uses all these six verses 
to talk about if you keep the commandments of God, hearken to the voice of God, and he said, I'll bless you in all these different ways. And I believe those words. But then in verse 7, he gives us a kind of a stiff reality here. He said, the Lord is going to cause your enemies that rise up against you to be smitten before you. But he said, they shall come. So don't deceive yourself. Your enemies are going to be there. Not only your main enemy, the devil, your adversary, Satan, uh, the liar of all liars, he is going to be against you. He is coming out against you. And he said, in all of your enemies, in, including, like I said, your number one foe or enemy, he said, they are going to come out against you. That's going to happen. They're going to come out, he said, in one way. And uh, uh, usually it's in a way that's obvious. When Satan comes out against you, sometimes he uses different tactics. But most of the time, it's an obvious thing, the way Satan will come against you, whatever it is. Maybe uh, a problem in your home uh, with a child, uh, maybe a, a, back sl a slider in your home, who knows? Uh, sickness, trouble, worries, whatever the devil comes out against you with. And he said he'll come at you in one way. But then he said he's going to have to flee from you or before you is the word that said here seven ways. So God said, don't worry about your enemy coming at you one way because I'm going to make him leave in seven different directions. Now, I don't know if this is exciting you yet, but it is me. I, I looked at this verse. It's been on my heart really uh, all week. I preached it actually at my church uh, yesterday morning. Of course, when you preach, it's a little different than teaching here on the podcast. But I believe this. Trust God. All of you that's listening to me today, believe God, keep his commandments and obey his voice, hearken unto his word, and he'll cause your enemy to have to run away from you, to flee away, and he'll make him go in seven different directions. And then verse 8, he said, the Lord will command a blessing. I hope, you're, I hope you really get this this morning. The Lord will command a blessing upon thee in thy storehouse. God said, I'm going to command a blessing. It's not just that you might be able to receive one. God said, I'm going to command a blessing upon you. And then he said, in all that thou hast set thine hand to do. He said, I'm going to bless thee in the land that you dwell. He goes on to verse 9 and said, the Lord will establish you. So God wants to take you that if you think you're unsettled or you're just not, uh, you may feel on a rocky road or on a, uh, you're not really, you may feel like you're wavering a little bit. But God said, I'm going to establish you. And the Bible said, the Lord will make you, verse 11, plenteous in goods. God wants you to have plenteous of goods. Plenty, in other words, a lot of goods. And he said, not only that, but he said, also the fruit of your body, the fruit of everything you have. And he said, uh, I'm going to bless you every way you turn. And then he said, the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. I don't know if you can get any better than that. When God says, I'll open up my treasures and give them to you. That's what his word said. And the Lord will make you the head, verse 13, not the tail. And you shall be above and not beneath. If you'll only hearken to my commandments, saith the Lord that I've commanded unto thee to do and to observe them. So what a small price to pay for God's blessings. Just keep the commandments, observe them and do them. And he said, I'll, I will not let you be on the bottom, but I'll put you on the top. 
You don't have to feel like you're always down, discouraged, out, broke, sick. You don't have to because God said, I don't want you down. I want you up. So, and I believe that this morning. Now, but there was something here. He said, but don't go aside from my words. Verse 14. He said, don't go to the right hand or to the left or after other gods. If you do and you do not hearken to my voice and my statues, I'll make a different commandment today that these curses will come upon you and they'll overtake you. Now notice notice verse number 15 and verse 2. Verse 2, he said, the blessings will overtake you. Blessings will overtake you. Verse 15, though, he tells us here that cursings will overtake you. So what's the difference? If you want a blessing to overtake you, you've got to follow God's word, follow his commandments, observe them, and do what's right. But if you want the cursings of God to overtake you, then don't listen to his word, don't go to church, don't believe God's word, and this is what will happen. Curse will you be in the city, cursed in the field, and your basket will be cursed. The fruit of the body will be cursed. Curse when you go in and come out. Verse 19, I'm going through these quickly. And the Lord will curse thee with vexations and rebuke and all you set your hand to do. It was the total opposite in the ending is what I read to you in the first, first part of this lesson. And the only difference was, are you going to follow the commands of God or not follow the commands of God? It's up to you. Thank God for these great verses. And I, I believe this morning that God wants to do exactly what he said. That hinge verse, that seventh verse, that's kind of in between what God said, I'll do ble between blessings and cursings. That was verse seven. Verse seven said, once again, I'll cause your enemies that's going to come out against you one way to flee seven ways. So here's what I want to tell you this morning, church. If you'll just believe God, trust God. God wants you to not see your enemy coming at you. He wants you to see him running away from you. Not just one way, but in seven different directions. Thank God for his word. Just one more verse I'd like to give you this morning from Jeremiah 31 and verse 12. The Bible said there in the 12th verse, therefore come and sing in Zion, flow together to the goodness of God for his blessings, wheat, wine, oil, the young of the flock. He said, and your soul shall be as a watered garden, and you shall not sorrow any more at all. So here's another thing Jeremiah said, when you come to the church, come with singing. When you come, sing in Zion. And not just sing, but he said, flow together to the goodness of God. When you go to church, God don't want you all pulling apart. God wants you to flow together. God wants the service to flow good, to flow together. We don't need to be pulling one direction, somebody else another direction, but let's get in there together, sing the songs of Zion, rejoice unto him, flow together. And what happens when we flow together? He said, the goodness of God and his blessings will be upon you. And I love this, and I want to close with this this morning. The last part of verse 12 of Jeremiah 31, he said, and ye, or you actually, you shall not sorrow any more at all. It's time to quit sorrowing. It's time to to quit looking and saying, what do I have to live for? It's time to quit saying, I can't survive. I can't make it. Or I've got to be dependent upon something or someone. You don't have to. Cast all your cares upon him, meaning Jesus, because he cares for you. 
God does not want you to sorrow anymore at all. Now, I know if you take this to some preachers, they're not going to agree with that last statement, but I don't know how they're going to get around this verse. I believe it. There is going to be sorrow. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. And I know there's going to be sorrow. But the Bible said if we'll do what's right, he'll cause us to never sorrow anymore at all. So as I go off uh, of the podcast episode today, my prayer for you is this, that you begin to watch your enemy, the devil, flee in so many directions, have to run from you because the blessings of God have absolutely overwhelmed you and overtaken you. And now you're singing in the house of God. You're flowing together in the house of God and the sorrow is gone and we don't have to suffer that anymore. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our podcast uh, episode today and we, we appreciate you all listening. And if you would like and subscribe uh, if you're on YouTube or follow if you're on any of the other podcast sites. And we'd be glad if you would do that for us. God bless you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.